A few weeks ago, I posted a tutorial on how to create a heat map matrix in Power BI. This one. If you haven't seen it, make sure to start there. After publishing that video, I had a great chat with another Power BI expert, Barnabash, and he had a fantastic idea about how to elevate user experience by switching my static heat map legend to a dynamic one. I loved his idea so much that I invited him to explain his thought process and execution. But before we do that, let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Without further ado, Barnabash, over to you. Hi there, my name is Barnabash. I work for Star Schema LTD, a professional services firm that helps data leaders and their organizations to use their data to make better business decisions, build smarter products, and deliver more value. We also help our clients to create better dashboards and to use those dashboards more effectively. We knew each other with Roland from the Power BI community. Recently, he posted a question that I have aimed to solve. So here is the situation. We have a conditionally formatted heat map like matrix representing busy hours of a customer service center. We apply different filters on the report, just changes the background color of cells of the matrix visual. This is desired and we expect conditional formatting to behave just like that. We also have a heat map legend that displays colors and some measures, but at the time when the question was posed, this legend was a static color scale that didn't respond to changes of the filter context. From a helicopter view, it works perfectly. However, if you dig deeper, the legend does not reflect color changes of the matrix. As you see, if I am filtering Brisbane and e-commerce, and we have less data points to display, this turns to be problematic. The legend at the bottom depicts minimum 25th percentile, median 75th percentile max values. However, with the filters applied, we have three ones with different colors, Yet, if I'm hovering over a Tuesday, between 15 to 16, it says 2. So colors don't match up with the legend. The red area is 5, so the matrix applied conditional formatting measures of the legend also respected changes of the filter context. However, the scale stayed in default state. No surprise, since with this approach, it is part of the background image. We had an idea how great it would be if the legend was adjusting as the user slices and dices the data. In other words, we wanted to have a dynamic heat map legend that displays a set of values, different percentiles, while also changes its color according to slicer selection. I reach the solution in iterations, therefore I provide you with approaches and a way of thinking. This was the initial state I have just shown you. We had a static color scale plus five measures below it capturing previously mentioned percentile values at the granularity of our matrix visual. Before we jump into the measures, here's a quick look at our data model. We have the ticket table here in the middle that is tied by some other dimensions. Then you can see summarize here that creates the granularity of the matrix and our measure, number of tickets served, which is evaluated in that context. After that, our X iterators just find the mean, 25th percentile, median, 75th percentile max values in that table. These measures are then put into cards placed under our static color scale. Replicating the same pattern in different measures would make maintenance harder on the long run, but we will fix that later in this video. Okay, if you want to have a legend reflecting the colors of the conditional formatted matrix, why not create this legend as a matrix itself? So I created a table with a column called header. Of course, we will need a sort and a placeholder column for visualization purposes. Later in this video, we will get there. Just for now, the purpose of this header column is to be placed into the columns well of the matrix usual. Then in approach two, I created an additional measure using switch that replaces the measures according to the filter context coming from this header column. For example, min string of the header column would call the measure responsible for calculating minimum value. 25th person string of the header column would call the measure responsible for calculating 25th person type value and so on. As you can see, this way we already solved our issue, but it's not so elegant. We can do better. Let's see how. 
let's not tire ourselves separating the helper table and measures. Create instead a calculation group that will address both these requirements at once. Create the filter context for the matrix visual in the columns well and performs calculations according to the definition of each calculation item, which are very similar to that of earlier measures. So far, we only use Power BI Desktop to solve our issue. Let's move a little bit forward using Tabular Editor. This is a tool extending the capabilities of Power BI Desktop. Once you've installed it, version 2 is free and it is enough for our task. You can open it under the external tools tab of Power BI Desktop. Let's see the creation of percentile calculation group. So we click on external tools tab and choose Tabular Editor. Pop-up window of Tabular Editor shows up. We right click on tables, create new calculation group. Let's name it CG percentiles, standing for calculation group for percentiles. Then right click on it, create new calculation item. Let's name it min, as this will be responsible for minimum value calculations. I just paste here the modified formula by showing you the original as well. As we see, the granularity of the table where we calculate the formula is the very same. There are only three differences afterwards. Number one, I omitted add columns because x iterators, min x and percentile x in our case, are already designed to compute expressions for each row of the iterated table. Therefore, we wouldn't need to pre-calculate this at tickets column. Number two, I changed min x to percentile x inc. Both operate on a table and for each row of the table, they perform a calculation. After we have these partial results of number of tickets served, min x returns the smallest number percentile x inc for the zeros percentile just as the same. I change them for better readability as you will see in the next steps. Number three, I introduce rounding to zero digits for easier comparison with other calculation items. Now I am creating the other calculation items, only modifying the percentile parts of the formula. Then we click on save and our modifications of the model get applied. Let's see the formatting of the legend matrix. We add name to columns well. We see that it's not in the intended order. It's because even though our name column is sorted by ordinal, an automatically generated field by the calculation group is not the right order. We go back to tabular editor and we change the ordinal number for max to 4. Tabular editor is smart enough to conclude that we intend to create an ascending order for calculation items. The reason for 4 is that we have 5 items but numbering starts from 0, as you see here. Then we refresh the model with this modification and categories show up the right way. We put the number of tickets served measure to value as well. At this point we could have put any measure into the well because the definitions of calculation items explicitly say change anything to that measure. We have our numbers, let's move forward with formatting. Switch style presets to none. Under grid and border, make its color to be white. Under style elements, turn on background color to be conditionally formatted. Modify the background color to what you like. In our case, the lowest value will be green, highest value will be red. And we check the middle color option. We repeat the same settings to conditionally format font color is where values won't be visible to the user. We set width of the columns. We center column headers. If we want our matrix to be displayed at the bottom as rows of the tall, we would need to add a single value field to the row as well. This can be a static single letter like A added to our calculation group. We add this field to row as well, go to specific column, turn on apply to total, and send the alignment to center. Under column headers, draw headers, we turn off text wrap and narrow down our placeholder column. Okay, this is all good so far, but our calculation items, conditional formatting of our dynamic legend, is still tied to one base measure, the one we called in our calculation items. Which means, if we wish to create a similar solution for a different metric, then we would need to recreate the whole process, which would be a bit painful. Let's move a step further and create another calculation group that is responsible for replacing the base measure before the calculation group responsible for percentile transformations kicks in. Let's see the creation of the measures calculation group. So we click on external tools tab and choose tabular editor. 
the pop-up window of tabular editor shows up, we right-click on tables, create new, calculation group. Let's name it CG measures, standing for calculation group for measures. Then right-click on it, create new, calculation item. Let's name it number of tickets served, but this item will be responsible for applying this measure. I just paste here the modified formula and explain a bit what it does. We could easily use just the measure reference, but in that case any measure in the report would be replaced by this measure. However, we might want some measures not to be affected by this calculation group. Therefore, we introduce an if statement where we are branching outcomes. In this example, if the measure is not average service minutes, it replaces the existing measure with the intended one. Otherwise, it leaves it as it is. Now, I am creating another calculation item simulating if the user would select a different measure. I called it number of tickets served over 5 minutes and it's a slightly modified version of the original one. The rest of the pattern is the same as before. Then we click on save and apply our modifications of the, to the model. We add a slicer containing the items of CG measures calculation group. Under slicer settings, options, style, we set it to tile. Resize a bit and under slicer settings selection, we turn on single select. This guarantees that only one item gets applied. We change the measure and we see that the matrix changes. Average service minutes, alias average wait time, stay untouched as we want it. However, we see a glitch. Our legend does not behave according to our measure selection. What happens here is that within this visual, the two calculation groups interact with each other. If such situation is in place, the developer explicitly needs to set the order in which calculation groups are applied. This is controlled by the precedence property. Let's get back to tabular editor and fix this. As we click on the calculation groups, CG percentiles has 0, as precedence and CG measures has 1. The higher precedence the calculation group has, the earlier it gets applied. Therefore, we change the order of the application by giving CG percentiles 20 and CG measures 10. We click on save and now we can see that the legend behaves as expected. Not only changes percentile values but also changes the measure for which it computes those percentile values. If I filter into e-commerce it's even more visible. Of course even with this solution can be further improved. For example if very few data points are selected then filling up blank values with zeros might not be the expected result. Plus, we might want to consider which percentile calculations make sense to display. This is also a matter of requirement, but as for this demo, we stopped here. So summing our journey, as a result of the force iteration, we have reached to a solution where the dynamic color legend is not only responsive to slicers, but the user is able to change the base measure under calculations. For what metric I am to view the heat map visual and the dynamic legend. Wow, what a great solution, right? It shows that the Power BI community have lots of smart members. If you like Barnabas' solution, make sure to let him know and connect via LinkedIn. I'll add his profile to the description box below. And as always, if you have any questions, let us know. Both of us will keep an eye on the comment section here. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.